there's no one syndrome of BWS that's, that is going to be present in every single case. At least if there is, we haven't found it yet. Um, but most cases have a significant enlargement of the tongue. And that is almost always due to an increase in the number of cells. There are other things that can enlarge a tongue. It can have, uh, it can get uh, lymphatic obstruction with tiny blood or tiny lymph vessels swelling up the tongue. It can have, you can have uh, enlargement of the individual fibers, much like a weightlifter's muscles in their arms. They, they get very big fibers. They don't increase the number of fibers, but these tongues are, are big because of an increase in the number of fibers. Um, somatic overgrowth or uh, increased length and weight of the body at birth is usually present. Um, if they're prematurely born, they're large for that gestational age. If they're a newborn, they'll be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 pounds. Uh, they usually, though not always, have some kind of herniation of the uh, umbilical region. The classic and most striking one is the one I've mentioned already, the omphalocele or herniation into the uh, umbilical cord. Uh, sometimes it's just a, uh, a hernia that's covered by umbilical skin. Uh, and sometimes it doesn't develop until uh, early infancy or, or early childhood. Uh, the uh, enlargement of various internal organs is not that easy to determine unless it's extremely severe. But uh, by modern imaging technology, we can usually determine that there's significant increase in the volume of the liver, the pancreas, and the most strikingly, the kidneys. Under the microscope, the abnormalities in the adrenal glands are constant until the fetal cortex disappears, after which they're gone. Um, the, uh, there are uh, abnormalities in the kidney as well. Uh, one of the abnormalities in the kidney that we noticed early on was an increase in the number of primitive or embryonal cells. Uh, and because of the increase in these primitive cells, I speculated that these children might have a predisposition to developing Wilms tumor, which is the most common malignant tumor of the kidneys. Just as my speculation that they might develop hypoglycemia was confirmed by the clinical observation of low blood sugar, I was in Alaska in the early 1960s uh, presenting some talks to the Alaska Pediatric Association. And I mentioned in talking about this interesting syndrome that they might have a predisposition to Wilms tumor. And a pediatrician in the audience uh, after my talk, said, Dr. Beckwith, uh, a couple of years ago, I had a patient who died of bilateral Wilms tumor, who, as you presented your pr uh, presentation, I, I can now recognize was clearly a girl that had your syndrome. So this was a very exciting um, uh, association, and one which further experience has shown is a, a very strong association. So that one of the features of the BW syndrome, and one that's very important for par parents to know, is that the, the risk of developing childhood abdominal tumors, not only Wilms tumor, but a, a malignant tumor of the liver, and a, a few other uncommon uh, embryonal tumors, um, uh, is, a, is a real concern. And one of the values of identifying a syndrome is that you know what to look for. And these tumors can usually be cured if they are detected early. And we have now wonderful, powerful tools to, um, to detect them early. And um, the, I don't want to give parents of newly born BW children the, the fear that their baby is going to develop cancer. It's only that their child is, um, is much more likely to develop cancer than uh, the neighbor down the street who has a newborn baby, um, that that baby would get cancer. Uh, probably the overall risk is in the range of 
So 90% are not going to get a tumor. Of the 10% who do, the vast majority are going to be cured. And uh, many of those will be cured with quite uh, gentle and um, non-destructive type therapy. So the cancer uh, uh, fear is not very great.